guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming a hair transformation video. Also, how I grew my hair out and this whole journey while keeping my hair blonde. So many people struggle growing their hair out while simultaneously bleaching it. And I just wanted to make this video because me and my hairstylist have worked very closely together to figure out how I can stay this very platinum blonde and still keep my hair healthy and grow it out. And if you saw what my hair looked like in the past couple years, it got pretty rough at some point. So I just wanted to make this video and show you my tips to keeping your hair long and healthy while still bleaching it. Before I begin, I have Instagram and TikTok. I would love for you to follow me over there. Let's get right into the video. So to begin, I wanna talk really quick about my background with my hair, and then we'll get into everything I've done to prepare it and grow it out. Okay, so to talk about the background of my hair, growing up, I always had like a bob haircut until I was in middle school and I decided to grow it out. And then I think I grew it out in like ninth grade. My hair is kind of a natural, it's like a dark blonde in the summer and kind of like a really light dirty brown in the winter. My mom would not let me color it until I paid for it myself. So I did not ever bleach my hair until maybe sophomore year when I had a job and I could pay to do it. So my hair was really long and healthy in ninth grade, 10th grade, even 11th grade because I could only afford to get my hair, you know, colored maybe once every six months, seven months. And then my problems kind of started coming at the tail end of my senior year. I had an incident where I sat in a hot tub and the chemicals hadn't been balanced yet and it turned half of my hair green. And when I say green, you may picture kind of like a green tint from a pool. No, it was grass green. I will put a picture up. It was so horrible. And that was literally a week before my high school graduation. And I went to the hairdresser. I was like, what do I do? And they could not get it out. They tried everything. And the, just putting bleach on that chemical like colored hair, it just fried it. I had to chop my hair and I chopped Quite a bit off it was pretty short it was like to here it was kind of like a long bob and i bleached i did a full head bleach which i have never done and it was very damaging so i chopped all my hair off i did a full head bleach and that is where my problems started so the next two years were a struggle my hair was short and damaged and for some reason i don't know why i just thought every time i got my hair done i had to do like a full head bleach and so my hair was just like so short i was going in between these like silvery blonde and yellow blonde and then I would like randomly decide here and there to get like a balayage or go dark because I was scared that I was damaging my hair which I was there was even a point where I was almost a full brunette with this super short hair the next two years I was just frying my hair I had no idea what I was doing I was not using good products and it was not growing and I was so fed up with it and then about two years ago maybe 2018 I got married that year and I decided I'm starting now. I need to get my hair healthy again. It is literally just fried off. It's so bad. And so that was kind of like the year that I started to really take care of my hair. The girl who does my hair now has been doing my hair since like 2017. So she had a year with my hair where it was really bad and she just tried her very best to work with it and then the last two years it has just progressively gotten better and better and better and we've been so thrilled with how far it's come and she wrote down a few things for me to share with you about how she does my hair and how to keep it healthy while bleaching it and all this stuff i might as well just get into it the last two years a few things have changed in my routine to get my hair past this length um i don't know if you can see it fully but here it is um, it's not crazy long. My sister has hair like literally down to her butt, but this is long for me. And especially if you have gone through the awkward stage where you cannot get it past like this length, I feel you. That was my life for a while and I am here to help you. And before I even begin, I am not a cosmetologist. I'm actually an esthetician, but that has nothing to do with hair. But I did kind of go into beauty school, but not for hair. This is just what worked for me. I am positive genetics play factor. So when I asked my hair girl, like, what is the number one thing that you see that helps people grow their hair out? 
the obvious answer is she just say switching your products to, you know, sulfate free, silicone free products. The shampoo and conditioner, I'll insert a picture, it's from Botanic Hearth and I use the peppermint oil one. I've been using these for maybe a year and I really like them. I love the scent. I like the way it feels. It's really good for like a sulfate and silicone free shampoo. A lot of times they don't lather and things are kind of weird, but use that. I wash my hair once a week. That is one thing. And I had to train my hair to do that. So I use that shampoo and conditioner. I wash it one time a week, maybe two if it's really bad. Those are on Amazon. I'll link them down below. I really like them. So wash my hair once a week. And obviously I'm platinum, pretty much platinum. And I use shimmer lights once about every other week. And it's so drying. It was really drying my hair out you know, the first few years that I was platinum doing that. Once every two weeks is plenty for me. Sometimes I even do it like once a month. Obviously it still takes my yellow tones out. I still have pretty platinum hair. My number two tip is to get a nice leave-in conditioner, a nice leave-in product. I love the It's a 10. My favorite is the one with keratin. It's kind of like an orange bottle. I'll put a picture of it here. Right now I'm currently just using the regular It's a 10 because it, my Ulta did not have the normal, the keratin one last time. But this product, I swear, was like the number one thing that just kind of like put me over the edge with my hair growth and protection. Um, I don't think it necessarily made my hair grow faster, but it retained the hair that I had. My hair did not break as fast. So how I use this is every time I shower, I get out of the shower and I use a cotton t-shirt and I'll talk about this later. I use a cotton t-shirt to like absorb the water in my hair. And then I will spray the It's a 10 all over my head and just leave it. I don't brush through it. I don't comb through it. I don't pick through it. I leave it till my hair is almost, almost dry. And then I take a wide toothpick and I just gently comb through my hair. And just doing that, it's a heat protectant. It's like a leave-in conditioner. It makes your hair super soft. It protects your ends. It protects your hair. I love it. It's a great product. Um, and it's a little bit pricey. The bottle will last you a long time. I have, I use, I maybe use two a year. Like the, they'll last you four to six months. I mean, depending how much hair you have. But for me, I it takes me about four to six months to get through a bottle. My next tip is to only use heat one to two times a week. I am a mom of one-year-old twins. I am busy. <laughs> I rarely use heat on my hair more than once a week. Um, what my routine is usually is I will wash my hair and just air dry it and wear it natural one day. The next day when it's looking like a little bit odd, <laughs> when it's looking like a little bit like it's not really fresh, it's not really, I will curl it that day and then I can usually wear it curled um, down for like a day or two usually two days so that's like what three to four days and then after that i will wear my hair up i'll wear it in braids for the next day or two before i need to wash it or i'll wear a hat or a beanie i've just found that that routine works really well for me i never straighten my hair anymore my hair is naturally very straight i really only curl it at this point and i do my curls because i've trained my hair not to get oily can last a long time. I curled my hair two days ago and this is what it looks like today. So it's worth training your hair to do that. Um, there are tons of YouTube videos about training, training your hair to not get oily. If you hear a screaming in the background, I am so sorry. You know my husband is watching them and he knows I'm filming a video, but he doesn't really care. They're just yelling anyways. So I love just curling it, letting it go a few days, then wearing it up in a pony, wearing it in braids. There are tons of heatless hairstyle tutorials on YouTube. Okay, my next piece of advice is to use a silk pillowcase. This has actually really helped my skin and my hair, and I have noticed a significant difference. I got my silk pillowcases on Amazon. I just got black ones, um, and they're pretty affordable. I really like using a silk pillowcase. It helps with breakage, and along with that, another tip is I usually sleep with my hair in a scrunchie. My hairstylist told me to do this. She said, pull your hair up in kind of like a loose pony or bun with a scrunchie while you sleep so it's just not all over the place, breaking all over. That has helped me as well. So this is one thing that, I don't know if it's kind of like, this is one thing that I don't really know if it's like an urban legend, but for me, I noticed a huge difference. So when I was living at home the first two years of college, we had um, hard water 
and my hair would not grow it was damaged and brittle and like our water filter or whatever had like gone out my senior year and my parents just like never fixed it and that is when i noticed my hair just deteriorating and then once i got married and we moved into our apartment i we did have soft water and we do have soft water at our house right now and like it's weird like ever since i got married and moved out my hair has just like vastly improved and i've been doing a lot of other things as well but i'm sure that this does play a part because hard water has a lot of like minerals and buildup and stuff in it and I just don't, I can't imagine that can be good for your hair. So yeah, just checking to see if you have a water filter. I know they literally make attachments for showers that can filter your water. So if you are like in an apartment building and you don't have a say in what kind of water you have, I don't really know how that works because I was in like a basement apartment, but you can buy shower heads on Amazon that filter your water. So preferably getting a soft water filter that has helped my hair so much. I feel like it's also like shinier and silkier. Maybe that's my imagination. I don't know. My next tip is getting a wet brush or any type of or tangle teaser or any type of brush that the bristles will bend. Um, Cause like back in the day, like all bristles on brushes were like really hard and they usually like would rip through your hair. And I, that is just like so bad for your hair. I don't actually use a wet brush right now. I need to go, I will put the link or find a picture of it and show you. It's like, a, it's supposed to be like a, technically a wet brush but I really like it it actually combs through my hair better than a wet brush and just the, my next tip is just brush your hair very softly I was that person who started at the root and would just rip down my hair like and, and I do it while it was wet and like I would just be so rough and now I've just learned like I've just made it a habit to every time I brush my hair start at the bottom go slowly just work your way up and once you get to the top just like going slow like we're so rushed all the time like I am so rushed all the time getting ready as a mom but just taking 10 extra seconds and just slowly brushing your hair the amount of breakage is just it's it's worth taking that extra time to reduce that amount of breakage I am now going to talk about my hairstylist and what she's done to my hair to help it grow and retain its health while still bleaching it so when a lot of people on TikTok too have asked me like what I ask for when I go and get my hair done. So for the past probably three years, I've been going to my hairstylist. Oh, by the way, her name's Caitlin. She's awesome. I will put her Instagram here. I think she's doing like these fun December specials. I think she's doing like a giveaway. Um, if you're in the like Northern Utah area, you should check her out because she's super talented and she specializes in blondes, but she does all, she does everything, but she's amazing at styling. She's great with blondes. But one thing that she has had me do is to, well, first of all, never do a full head bleach. Um, if you're just trying to help your hair and it's damage and stuff. Every time I go in, I alternate between a full head highlight and a half head highlight. Um, a lot of people can just get away with doing a half head of highlights, but damage, or sorry, bleach is obviously damaging. So anytime you go in to get your roots touched up, you know, you're, you're damaging your hair. And if you can cut that damage in half every other time you go, it does make a big difference. So the last time I went, I just did a half head and it still looks very blonde. I just went actually probably a month ago. It was very blonde, still looks super fresh. It's just a little darker underneath, but you don't really see that until you pull your hair up and it still looks normal because you're foiling. You're not doing like a full head half bleach. It still foils, so it still looks normal. And she uses Olaplex every single time she does my hair. So ask your hairstylist if they use Olaplex. It makes a huge difference personally that I have noticed. Basically, it's like a squeezy bottle and you like squeeze it and you get a little bit just like the tiniest bit of Olaplex concentrate and you mix it in with the bleach, I think. Um, I'm not a hairstylist, but this is just like kind of what I've observed her do. And you mix it in with your bleach and then you there's like a number one, a number two. I think that's a shampoo and conditioner. I'm not really sure, but I only get that done when I am there. I always have a number three. So a number three is like the take home. I know that Olaplex now has like a number six and like an oil and stuff. I haven't looked into that. I probably should. I always use a number three. I use this probably once every two weeks, maybe once a month. It's a leave-in conditioner treatment. And this basically, it helps restore the bonds in your hair. Once hair is broken, I don't think you can ever repair it, but this helps like strengthen the bonds that you already have. 
and um, in the bleach, like this, the Olaplex number one or whatever that you mix with the bleach, it actually like helps while your hair is lightening to not destroy the bonds, I guess. That's how, I mean, I'm sure there are tons of videos on like exactly how Olaplex works, but it's so much better than just using straight bleach on your hair. So yeah, I use Olaplex every time I bleach my hair. I use the leave-in treatment once a month, roughly. And how I use the leave-in treatment is I will dampen my hair. I will put the Olaplex on my hair and I'll leave it for 30 minutes to an hour and then I will shower and wash my hair like normal. And the other thing is, um, I get like a root smudge. Well, she does kind of like, it's called like a root tap or a root smudge. I don't know if they're the same thing. I think they're kind of interchangeable. But she kind of like makes it a little bit of a shadow on top because the when it grows out, it doesn't look as drastic as just like grow out you know like just like a straight line and that way I can go longer in between appointments I really like the root smudge look just because it does look so much more natural and it just it grows out so much better and going longer between appointments obviously is gonna be a lot better for your hair currently I go and get my hair touched up because I am so blonde like every four to five months but that is, you know, that's good. That's a lot of people, you know, go that long in between appointments anyway. So I can go that long because she does a really good job. And she also, I don't know if I can like word this correctly, but she told me the way she foils, she like foils on a diagonal so that when your hair grows out, it's not just like also, it helps with this look of the straight line look. Like it doesn't look as severe when it grows out because her foils are kind of staggered on a diagonal and so when it grows out it just looks so much better than like typical bleach grow out. Sorry I have my laptop here and I'm looking at my notes so I'm trying to see if I forgot anything. Obviously this takes time. My hair got really like healthy and strong. I don't really know if it grew a lot but it got very healthy and strong when I was pregnant with my twins. That was one of the only good things about that pregnancy. The one great thing that came out of it besides my two cute little boys. Yeah obviously pregnancy, hormones, like like problems with your thyroid, stuff like that can affect your hair growth. So if you've gone down this rabbit hole and you have done all these things and your hair is not repairing, probably look into your hormones, probably look into your thyroid. There are things that can affect hair growth like that. Yeah, my pregnancy did like really make my hair longer and softer and shinier. Just even before I was pregnant and even now, like still growing my hair, I'm not pregnant now, obviously I haven't been for like a year, um, retaining that growth and the shininess. I've recently gone down the rice water rabbit hole, but I've only been testing that for about two weeks, so I should probably make an update video if I think the rice water technique works or if it's just like a trend, a fad, I don't know. I see it all over TikTok. I don't know if I mentioned this, I might have forgotten this, but I always dry my hair with a cotton t-shirt, like a soft cotton t-shirt. I do not use a heavy towel. That's one thing I always used to do and it was literally, I had so little hair and the towel was always so heavy that it just like would rip my hair out. So now I just use one of my husband's like super soft cotton t-shirts to dry my hair. I'll flip my head upside down, I'll put the cotton t-shirt on and I'll just squeeze the water out and then I'll very gently kind of put it in a turban, but I don't ever like twist it super hard and pull it into place because you know, anything rough like that on your hair is not gonna be good for it because your hair is like, so fragile in that stage. I think that's it. Okay, my camera is about to die and I think I've already gone through all the information that I have to share with you. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, please leave a comment and please subscribe. I have been working really hard with my social media lately to try to bring you the best, most highest quality content ever. I'm sorry if the quality of this video isn't great. I have a new lens for my camera coming in the mail soon. So hopefully the quality will just get a little better. I've been working a lot <laughs> to improve stuff like that. Like I just, I got accepted into the TikTok creator fund a few months ago and literally every penny I've made from the creator fund has gone towards higher quality production um, for my Instagram and YouTube and everything. So I am so grateful for you guys and that support. It helps me so much. Um, I make motherhood lifestyle beauty content videos. So if that is something that you enjoy watching, please subscribe. I try to post as frequently as possible. I am going to make it a goal in 2021 to post once a week. I hope this video gave you some good information and was helpful for you. Um, if you've gone on any sort of hair journey or if you have any other tips, please leave them down below. I hope you guys have a wonderful day.